classmate of his, a Harvard classmate by the name of William Randolph Hearst. This is so that you know about. William Randolph Hearst was the publisher of the San Francisco Chronicle. And Mr. Hearst published this in his newspaper, and from that point on, Casey at the Bat lives. And so I will, I will recite it to you as best I can. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville nine that day. The score stood four to two, with but one inning yet to play. And then when Cooney died at first, and Barrels did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the faces of the game. A struggling few got up to leave in deep despair. The rest clung to that hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could but get a whack at that, they'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Lynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake. And the former was a Lulu, and the latter was a fake. <laughs> so upon that stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Lynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the must despise, ripped the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and men saw what had occurred, there, there was Jimmy safe in second and Flynn a hug in third. Then from 5,000 throats and more there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley and rattled in the dell. It knocked against the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped up to the plate. There was a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his cap. No stranger in the crowd could doubt. It was Casey at the back. 10,000 eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. 5,000 tongues of water as he wiped them on his shirt. And while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, Defiance gleamed in Casey's eyes. A sneer curled Casey's lips. And then the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood and watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people there rose a muffled roar like the beatings of a storm wave on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! <laughs> shouted someone from the stand. And, and it's likely they have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He sealed the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it. The umpire said, strike two, fraud, cried the maddening thousands. And the echo answered, fraud. But one scornful look from Casey and the multitude was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his bustle strain. And they knew there Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lips. His teeth are clenched with hate. And he pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball. And now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered with the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. And somewhere bands are playing. And somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing and little children shout. But there is no joy in Budville. Mikey Casey has struck out. Yeah. <laughs>